everyone. Welcome back to Building Games on AWS. This is episode eight of the Game Analytics Pipeline series. My name is Gina Gizzi. I'm a solutions architect with AWS Game Tech. And in today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive on batch analytics. So we'll take a closer look at the architecture for batch and interactive analytics, and we'll discuss some of the services that are used. And then we'll follow that up with a demo to see what that actually looks like in the AWS Management Console. So let's get started. So here's a closer look at just the services used for interactive or batch analytics. So first, game event data is stored in Amazon S3, which is our simple storage service that provides scalable and cost-effective storage for both raw and processed data sets. The S3 buckets are also configured with what's called object lifecycle management policies, including S3 intelligent tiering, which provides cost savings for data sets with unknown or changing access patterns. S3 also has 11 nines of availability. That's 99.99999. 11 nines percent availability, making it a really great option for a data lake for your game events. The solution also uses AWS Glue for metadata storage and ETL or extract, transform, and load processing, including an AWS Glue data catalog, which serves as the metadata store for your ingested data. It also deploys an ETL job for processing your game events and deploys a Glue crawler, which will update your Glue data catalog by essentially crawling through your data stores. Then Amazon Athena and QuickSight are used to provide interactive querying and visualizations to your end users. So sample Amazon Athena queries are deployed through what's called an Athena workgroup to provide uh, you analysis of your game events. And it also allows you to run your own custom queries if you choose to do that as well. So basically this just allows you to run queries and create reports on all of your game event data that's stored in S3. And Amazon QuickSight is our business intelligence tool that allows you to visualize game data, allowing you to create and configure and customize dashboards for doing data exploration. So let's take a look at how this works in the AWS Management Console. So while I do this in the AWS Management Console, I'm going to be following along step by step with actually the implementation guide that's uh, provided with the Game Analytics Pipeline solution. So I'm on step three here for testing the sample queries in Amazon Athena. So the first step is to navigate to the Amazon Athena Console. So I'm going to type in Athena in the search bar and click that to head to the services landing page. From the Athena homepage, choose Get Started. Next, select the Workgroup tab on the top of the page. So at the top here in the navigation bar, you can see right now that the Workgroup is primary. Let's click this to change it to the Game Analytics Workgroup uh, that's spun up with the Game Analytics Pipeline so that we can use some of the sample queries that are provided. So select this and click Switch Workgroup. Now, just click Get Started again to go back to the service landing page and we can see that our workgroup has changed. So now instead of the primary one, it's the game analytics one. So from here, we're going to choose the saved queries tab. We're going to select one of the existing queries and choose run query to see what the SQL results are. But there's a lot of different sample queries that are provided out of the box with the solution. So things like new users last month, total plays by level, total failures by level. So there are out of the box solutions that are out of the box queries that work with the game analytics pipeline, but you can also run sample queries or custom queries yourself. So let's take a look at level completion rate. So let's click into this and click Run Query. 
and we get a percentage of the level completion rate for all of our different sample levels. So we can see that the hardest level, which only has a 12 or 13% completion rate, is level 5. And the easiest level is level 1, which has a 76% completion rate. Okay, so now we're going to move on to step four, which is to connect Amazon Athena to QuickSight so that we can use Athena as a data source within QuickSight. So the first step is to navigate to the QuickSight console. And while this is loading, it might prompt you to actually create a QuickSight account. So if you don't have one already, you'll have to go through the process to actually register for an account. Now, first, let's configure our security and permissions to make sure that QuickSight has the right permissions to be able to access our data. So we click Admin, Manage QuickSight, Security and Permissions on the left-hand navigation pane, and then we're add, adding or removing access to AWS services. So Athena in S3 is already selected, but just to make sure everything's up to date and to show you what the process looks like, we'll unselect Athena, reselect it, and then it will prompt us to allow permissions to specific S3 buckets. So click next and then select the bucket that has all your data in it, which is the analytics bucket rather than the solutions log bucket. So make sure that you select the bucket as well as the right permissions for the Athena work group and click finish. Finally, click update and then you're done configuring the security and permissions. So the next step is to go back to QuickSight by clicking the logo in the top left corner. Go to data sets. And now we're gonna create a new data set. So we're going to choose Athena as our data source and we're going to give our data source a name which will be the game analytics pipeline connection and we'll choose the Athena work group to be not the primary one but the game analytics work group that gets spun up with the solution and then let's validate the connection first and once the connection is validated, we'll create our data source. Now we have to select the table, which is the game events database that gets spun up with the solution. And we'll, er, we're choosing the raw events table within that database. Next, we hit select. Now we have a couple of options here. We can either import to Spice for quicker analysis. Uh, analysis or directly query our data. So I'm just going to choose directly query our data. And then instead of visualize here, let's edit and preview our raw data. So we're going to add a couple of calculated fields that we can work with while we're doing visualizations. So we see that our data has been successfully imported here. I'm going to add a calculated field for the name. I'm going to enter level ID. And for the function, we want to do a parse JSON function. So if I search for parse, I found parse JSON. And for the field, we want to do event data. And then we'll just make sure to enter the uh, same formula that's instructed in the implementation guide and click save. And we're going to add one last calculated field, which we'll call event timestamp time format. We're going to look for uh, this uh, epoch date function. And for the field, we want to use event timestamp. And then click save. And finally, we're done our data preparation. So let's just click save. OK, so let's create some sample visualizations in QuickSight. So make sure you're on the analyses 
section and click new analysis. And for our data set, let's choose the raw events data set that we just created. Next, we'll click create analysis. And now let's, uh, let's look at the different visual, visual types that QuickSight provides. So you can do things like vertical bar charts, uh, pie charts, line charts, pivot tables, and more. So there's a lot of different options to visualize your data in QuickSight. So for now, we're going to choose the event timestamp time format calculated field that we chose or that we just created with QuickSight. So make sure to choose that. You can wait for it to visualize. Make it a little bigger here. And in the field well section, which is right up here, we'll make sure to drag event ID into the value field. So we can just drag and drop. And then we'll drag event type into the color field well, which is right here. Now we're going to select the drop down arrow next to the event timestamp time format and aggregate it by minute instead of day. We can edit the title if we want to do that as well. So we can change this to count of events filtered by event type. <coughs> we can also label our X and Y axis as well and create a legend. So for the X axis, I can uh, click here and click rename. And I'll rename this as event timestamp so it looks a little cleaner. I'll rename my Y axis to be event count and it looks like the legend is already labeled as event type so we'll just leave that as it is so this is what our line chart should look like you can see it doesn't look exactly like that but if we zoom in to take a closer look at our data then we can see it resembles this chart uh, more so. So this shows you the count of different events by the event type. So you can see things like logins and logouts and levels failed and levels started and uh, users that are registered and more over time. So have fun playing around with QuickSight to see what different types of visualizations you can make. There's a couple of different sample ones that you can run through as well. So you can walk through this implementation guide to see if you can create those or try creating your own visualizations to see what insights you can extract from the sample data. So that's it for today's episode. And that almost sums it up for the Game Analytics Pipeline series. We have one more episode after this where we'll sum up what we've learned and provide relevant resources for continued learning. So make sure to stay tuned for that. As always, please leave a comment in the comment section below if there are any tutorials that you would like to see. And thank you so much, everyone.